Hello and welcome to Git and GitHub for Absolute Beginners. Today we're going to talk about Git and GitHub, especially for people who have very little experience to no experience with Git and GitHub and what it means. We're going to take some time to talk about what version control is, what Git is, and what GitHub can do for you. This is really geared towards people who have no experience with this, but have maybe heard of what it is. You should have a sense of, oh, I've heard of GitHub, um, what does it mean? Or maybe you've heard the term fork it on GitHub and you wonder what that's about. So this is geared mostly towards newer designers or developers. Um, it is not only geared towards developers though, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. So welcome. My name is Megan Fister. I am the Central Pennsylvania Adobe User Group Manager, and I also make WordPress websites for small businesses. You can find me on Twitter at Megan Fister and also at CPAUG, C-P-A-U-G. Before we get into um, specifically about Git and GitHub, we need to talk a little bit about version control. Version control systems, VCSs, they record changes to files or sets of files over time so that you can recall and use specific variations and versions of that later. We use version control to revert files back to a previous state, to revert an entire project back to a previous state, and also to compare changes over time. And it's not just for code changes, although the majority of what you'll find on GitHub is code, but it can also make sense for designers too. And I wanted to talk about that briefly here. You know, if you've done any kind of design, I always tend to think of logo designs. Anything you have that has iterations, um, anything where you've got version one, version two, version three, final version one, final version two, final version three, as the, as the joke tends to go, then you can use version control for those things because it's not just for code, it's for any file. So I like to think of it, if you're a logo designer, it's probably going to make sense for that. Um, I also like to think of it maybe in terms of a large brochure project, something where you're likely to have um, several variations of what happens over time and you know you, you present something and then you might want to roll it back to a previous version. Rather than storing those locally, you could store those remotely on GitHub. So version control can make sense for that as well. And you can also compare changes over time, which is nice. So maybe you're not sure what the difference is between, you know, uh, final version one and final version two. This will allow you to see what changes have happened between that time period. So Git and GitHub are not the same thing. It's kind of like Java and JavaScript, not the same thing, even though they have similar sounding names. Now these two are related to each other, but we need to talk about Git first before we talk about GitHub. So what is Git? Git is a free and open source distributed version control system, just like we talked about version control, and it's designed to handle everything. So if you have a very small project, no problem. Um, I tend to work with other people, collaborate, but I also do a lot of projects just by myself. Um, it's just me, and it makes sense for that as well. So you can be a single proprietor person doing this for yourself, or you can be Google and use this as well. And it's meant to have good version control with speed and efficiency. Git allows groups of people to work together on the same documents. Now frequently that's code, but you can work on the same documents at the same time without stepping on each other's toes. Now, way back when I started on the internet, um, this was probably around, mm, oh boy, I'm gonna date myself, but here we go. Around 1998, 99, 2000, um, when I was working on collaborating with other people, you had to essentially yell out in the office, okay, I'm going to be pulling down this file and working on it. And then you're, because what you were doing was you were pulling a file down from FTP, maybe uploading it to a development server after that and testing it and then pushing it to a, a live server. But it was always about is somebody else working on that file and how do you know somebody else is working on that file? In this case, Git prevents that kind of having to shout out in the office, okay, I'm pulling down the file index.ssf or whatever it might happen to be at the time period. Um, it's a lot better, especially if you're working with a remote team. I was fortunate in that the majority of the work that I was doing at that time was within the office, even though, it, I mean, it could have done remotely, it was within the office. And so, you know, you could do the shout out, like who's on what, <laughs> who's on first. 
but this is much, much better. And with teams being global and working in different different countries and different time zones and um, all different projects and different pieces of the project, it just makes so much more sense to use something like Git as a variation for that and uh, for a version control handling. So Git handles things a little differently than other uh, version control systems and there are multiple version control systems uh, for example you've probably heard of subversion that's one so git is uh, similar in that it's version control but what it does is it handles the data kind of like a snapshot so it tends to view it as snapshots not differences more like a certain instance in time um, and it's used by a lot of big companies including adobe uh, other companies that use it, Facebook, Google, and I'm sure they have enterprise versions of that. Although, let me back up a second here. Adobe does have some open source stuff, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So every time you commit, which is saving the state of your file in Git, it kind of takes a picture of what your files look like at that moment, and then it stores a reference to that snapshot. when the files have not changed it doesn't store the file again it just links it back to the identical file that it already stored so it's nice in that sense too you don't have a bunch of the same exact files even though they are the same file you're not uh, duplicating anything which is great so many people use git using a command line tool or terminal if you're using a mac you can also use um, a graphical user interface too a gui and here's a link that you can use to get to a, a whole bunch of different GUIs that you can use for Git. Um, it seems like a lot of people who use Git are comfortable using command line or terminal, but I have seen people who are interested in using um, the user interface. I tend to like the user interface. I'm pretty comfortable using uh, Git from the terminal as well, but um, I like things represented visually, and for me, having the uh, graphical user interface just... Um, just works for me visually. I just like it. So whatever works for you, uh, Terminal's probably gonna be faster. You know, if you're really comfortable and you've really got the uh, different commands nailed down, it's probably gonna be a lot faster. I can't, I don't even have to say probably. It will be a lot faster. But for me, I like visual representations of things and so I find it to be more comfortable. But you can use whatever you want. Now, Git has three states that your files are going to be in. You're, they're basically going to reside in either modified, staged, or committed. And we're going to talk about each of these here. Modified means that you have changed the file, but you haven't actually committed it to your database yet. So it's kind of like when you're working on a file on your desktop and you make some changes and you'll see in a Mac, it's like a little star at the top, meaning that you've made changes, but you haven't saved this file yet got staged and that means that you've denoted that the modified file is ready to go into your next commit snapshot but you haven't actually committed it yet so first you've modified it now you've said staged it okay I I am ready to make this a snapshot and then finally you're going to commit it and that means that the data has been safely stored in your local database so modify staged and committed and how the Git workflow works is you basically, you first you modify your files, so you've got your working directory and you're making your changes to them. You stage those files, adding your snapshots, snapshots to your staging area, and then you do a commit. That takes the files as they were in your staged area and then stores that permanently in your Git directory. In our next video, we're going to talk a little bit more about GitHub terminology.